This is Robbie Dillmore from The Christian Car Guy and Kingdom Pursuit, where we hear how God takes your passion and uses it to build a kingdom. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it and share it. But most of all, thank you for listening and for choosing the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. Welcome to Truth Talk Live. All right, let's talk. The truth is, I can hide it, I can hold it in the A daily program powered by the Truth Network. This is kind of a great thing, and I'll tell you why. Where pop culture, current events, and theology all come together. Speak your mind. And now, here's today's Dude. Truth Talk Dude. Live host. Dude. So is it the great commission, or is it the great suggestion? Because statistics might bear out that less than 10% of born-again Christians are actively sharing their faith. So we might think as believers that if it's so good, if the gospel of grace and the good news of Christ and salvation and forgiveness of sins, and by his stripes we are healed, and eternal life in heaven is so wonderful, why aren't we giving it away? I'm Stu Epperson. Welcome to Truth Talk Live, and we're going to get real about this today, the Great Commission or the Great Suggestion. And I want you to tell me about your missions trip and about how going on a missions trip has changed your life. And then I want you to challenge the proposition that I'm going to now set forth, and that is life is a missions trip. Am I right? Am I wrong? Across the table from me is a man committed to to the Great Commission. He is the commissioner of International Commission, a ministry that's dedicated to spreading the gospel. Brother Mark Good, Dallas, Texas, a Texan in whom there is no guile. It's good to have you on, Truth Talk Live, sir, right here in the hot seat. Your heart beats to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tell us more about this. That's great, Stu. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to be on today with you and to share uh, about how we go about sharing the Great Commission. And it is, uh, it's a commission. It's not the suggestion. Uh, yet people do feel like uh, it's up to pastors and mission pastors or somebody else to go share. But uh, God said for all of us to go into the world and to share the gospel and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And then this is the best part, and lo, I am with you even mm. to the end of the age. And where are we now? Well, who knows, but it's a great thing to be able to go and to share Jesus. And that's what we do. International Commission is about sharing the gospel. A lot of places go and they do great things. There's all kinds of missions in the world. Uh, you asked me a question off the air a while ago that is a great question. What makes International Commission different than other mission organizations? And my answer is, is that we strictly go to share the gospel. We are an evangelistic outreach, and we go to share the gospel. Um, other places go, and they do great things. They do humanitarian things. They uh, may build a water well, or they may uh, share uh, different things. They may paint the same bench that they painted last year. That's all great and good. But how many people are really sharing the gospel? And then the other thing is we go into the world, the whole world, not just our Jerusalem, Samaria, or Judea, but we go into all the world. We do those other things too. We go into our local areas, and we have strategists and uh, missionaries all over the world. There's about 645 people that work with uh, International Commission. I'm going to call it IC for short. And uh, they work all over the world, mm. in all the different continents of the world. Um, we have been blessed over the years, Stu. We've been, in, we've been in ministry now for 50 years. Ministry was started by a simple uh, cotton farmer out of West Texas. And uh, God got a hold of his life, said, you know what? I think you need to go and you need to share the gospel. So he did. And he started out by going from West Texas around Lubbock, Texas, and he went down towards um, uh, 
the, the river ministry, really, in Mexico and started there. And then from there, he laughs and he says, and I guess God just kept us going south because we moved into Latin America and other places. And at some point, they jumped across the oceans. And now we have gone into 192 different countries across the world. There's about 217 or so, 16, 17 different countries and territories in the world. And we've been in 192 of those. 192 countries. Wow. We're trying to get to the rest of yeah. them. And our entire goal for really a perpetuity here is to keep going to those countries and to have someone sharing the gospel in those countries, wow. every country in the world, but not just this year, but every year. Wow. And that's our ultimate goal. Okay, that's the voice of Mark Good with International Commission. And I don't know, I gotta, we got to deal some stuff here. Uh, Nick, I don't know how he got past our screeners. You told you guys said that we were having someone that just is humanitarian stuff around the world. You go and share the gospel like that intentionally, aggressively, ambitiously. Absolutely. Okay, we got to we could work this out, friends. Maybe someone could call in and, and, tell, and stop this guy from doing. That's dangerous. <laughs> Souls could be saved. What are you thinking? <laughs> we got uh, Jeff and Jumper in the room here. Two of your uh, team members. That's right. One does uh, stateside aggressive evangelism he goes to yep. the border and leads people to christ coming right across another exactly. one goes to the most dangerous countries of the world the gentleman on the left there sitting in the studio audience you can't see him and that's probably good now i'm not saying you have a face for radio jeff i'm saying you know we get we can some things we don't want to t- be to tell people too much about but you've told me before that you have a 50 50 chance some of these countries you go to of not coming back yeah. and i want to ask this question mom and dad would you send your kid on a missions trip with a group like international commission knowing they're going to a dangerous country, a country that's less than 1% born again, and a country where that's been they've been known to kill and persecute, torture, and imprison Christians. That's right. Would you send your child on a missions trip to a country like that? 866-34-TRUTH. Question number two, which really was number one, is it the Great Commission or the Great Suggestion? Why aren't we more gung-ho about the gospel like these folks at International Commission? And you're going to help us with that all hour long. You're going to be with us to talk about, to challenge us, to be more, here's a big word for you, missiological. Mm. And how is that true every day I, I live and everywhere I go? And how is, it, how is life actually a missions trip? So let's talk about, you go to some pretty dangerous countries, some of which we can't name on here. That's correct. Why would you do that, Mark? I mean, someone could get killed. What are you thinking? Uh, It's a commandment. But think about the apostles. What did Jesus tell them? He said, go into all the world. Every one of those apostles went into countries and places that were dangerous. And honestly, all of them were martyred or died a martyr's death, uh, crucified, burned, whatever, except John the Revelator. He's the only one that, that but he got exiled to an island of Patmos. Okay. But he wow. was doing what was commanded. we got to take a break. When we come back, finish that thought. And I'm going to warn you, you're going to get invited, everyone listening out there, to co- go on a missions trip with International Commission. The only thing standing in the way is this loud, loquacious talk show host to try to talk you out of it. Call and tell me why missions trips are a good or a bad idea. Tell us your missions trip testimony at 866-34-TRUTH. 866-348-7884 on Truth Talk Live. Coming right back after this. Truth Talk Live. This is the Truth Network. Truth Talk Live, a show committed to busting you out of your comfort zone. Every time I get behind the mic, I'm Stu Epperson. It does that for me because these guests are amazing. The callers are remarkable. The The Marine that called in yesterday says, look, you know, talking about would you suffer for buying a copy of God's Word? He's like, you know, I, I, I signed up to give my life for my country when I deployed with the Marine Corps. He says, I'm glad to buy all kinds of Bibles. I don't care what it costs me. I mean, that kind of, those kind of calls riveted me yesterday on this show get the podcast learn more about all this at truthnetwork.com right now we're talking to some gentlemen who are with a ministry that aggressively shares the gospel all over the world and a lot of questions pop into your mind when you talk to folks like this first of all you know we open the show by saying is the great commission is it really just a great suggestion because if you look at how few believers are sharing their faith you think well maybe we just think this is one of those uh, you know options that, you know, we don't, you know, this is not necessarily a required course, right, to graduate. But 
it is the Great Commission, and then this idea of missions trips. And we asked the question, parents, would you let your kid go to a missions trip, even to a dangerous place? Maybe we should layer that deeper and say, kids, would you let your parents go? <laughs> because like Jeff's in the studio, his kids let him go. He tells me 50% chance he doesn't come home, and he tells me the country he's go to. We've supported him financially, and it's crazy, and he's been on the show before. And that right there, but we had lunch, Mark, Mm-hmm. With International Commission, the president out of Dallas, Texas. Thank you for being here and for sharing the the kind of the mission of the ministry earlier. We had lunch with Jumper here, Jeff and I did, and we had a little bit of an intervention. Mm-hmm. We talked about that at coffee, didn't we? We did, yeah. So, so Jumper, get your mic, get that mic on your chin, and come up here and t- tell everyone, you know what happened. Your life wasn't going so well. You're a born again believer. You're 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 doing the right stuff, but you're in a in some. Per- you don't need to get into the stuff you're into, but you, you know you're, you're you have some challenges that that life is hitting you hard, you know, with family and other things. And and suddenly you met a guy named, you met Chetwood at, at Mayberry. We had lunch, and some things took a different turn quickly. Tell us what happened. Yeah, so, Stu, uh, you know, I was in a cloud. You saw me. I was oh, uh, in a, in yeah. a dark place. And, and Jeff uh, invites me to go to the Philippines on a mission trip uh, to Southeast Asia with International Commission to share the gospel. And so uh, we went through a process and uh, – several weeks of uh, deciding and uh, in the end I just felt called to go and it absolutely turned my life upside down it absolutely changed everything uh, when you see 15,000 people make first-time professions of faith when you walk up to somebody and ask them if they ever heard of Jesus and they say no I don't know who that is and you ask them what's a Bible they don't have a clue as to what a Bible is And they are downtrodden, they are beaten, and when you share the greatest information, the greatest story ever told with them, and their their whole complexion changes. I mean, you can just see weight lifted off of off of their body, off of their face, in their in their facial expression, and it is an is an awesome joy to do that, Mm -hmm. and a privilege, a privilege to go share Jesus. Wow! And and it got you out of your funk, and now you're full time going out there all over the country and the mm-hmm. world, but you're focused stateside uh, sharing the gospel. Yeah, so um, International Commission has been uh, uh, looking at North America the past three or four years. We're working on projects across America. We've been in four or five states already so far. And I tell you what, the uh, church in America, I, they need a facelift. I tell you, they people come to church. It's the social gospel. They got programs in place uh, and they've lost the great commission yeah. it, it, they th- they think it's a great suggestion or only a certain a group of people in the church are out evangelizing and sharing yeah, the we leave we delegate that to the super spiritual folks but if you want to spark a revival in your own life go share the gospel with someone who's got a bigger set of problems because mm-hmm. you had some problems that day at the restaurant at mayberry in winston-salem on miller street you had some problems but when Chetwood starts telling you about the souls, the less than 1% of born-again folks in the country that he wanted to take you to, and he took you there, and you gave you gave the gospel to people who went from darkness to light, and you saw their lives changed. Suddenly, your problems were tiny here in America, right? And so that's a revival jumper. It was incredible because when you see how most of the world lives and how compared to how we live in the United States or in North America and our, our lifestyle— um, we, we're, there's nothing, no comparison. Okay. There. We got to get skip on the line of Winston Salem, North Carolina caller. We got the, the lines are filling up. The number's eight, six, six, three, four truth. That's eight, six, six, three, four, eight, seven, eight, eight, four. It's an all missions hour. What about these missions trips? Is it the great commission or is it the great suggestion? Maybe we should, you know, back off of evangelism. We're not doing much of it now as a church, but what would happen if we woke up? Why, why aren't more people going on missions trips? Let's go to skip, skip. You're on truth talk live right now, buddy. Jump on in here. Okay. Talk to me. Hey, Sue, how are you? Hey, man, fantastic. Good to hear your voice. What do you think? Well, I just, when I heard this, I just want to make a brief comment. Um, my dad, uh, I was raised, um, my dad was a, um, worked for the federal government in Northern Virginia. Um, Mom and dad loved the Lord. That's, they were so much a part of, of, of my life, spiritual life. But anyway, um, my dad retired from the federal government and moved to Roanoke, Virginia, and God got hold of his heart in his retirement years, 
And basically, he was in full-time Christian service traveling overseas. And there was a church in the country of Romania now that he helped plant. He was not a Bible college graduate. He was not a pastor. He was not ordained. He did not go to Bible college or anything. But Dad spent his retirement years traveling all over the world, wherever the church wanted him to go, that he was involved with, doing exactly what you're talking about. And he would come back just so full of life. Hmm, that's something. And so, yeah. but he was retired. Like, He's supposed to chase a little white ball. He's supposed to get the camper and pull the <laughs> pull the pull his casket and his motorcycle behind that, and you know, go go do some well, things. He hadn't been able to do, and here he's going plant churches in Romania. Skip, come on, man. We well, might need to do an intervention I on know, you. I know. Well, I'll, I'll you, like you brought that up, and he he wasn't a good golfer, but he liked the game. But he went out. He was he worked for a golf course for a while, and then he told me, he said, "Son, this isn't for me." <laughs> so. So that? yeah, he still played mm-hmm. golf. And that had what kind of impact did that have on your life, Skip? That a godly legacy like that? I mean, yeah. Here I was. I was already in the ministry. I was a pastor, and it it had a profound impact on my life. Just watching my dad yeah. in the latter part of his life give his life like that. Mm-hmm. And mom got dementia, and or else he would have continued mm-hmm. taking missions trips up until yeah. his late eighties. Wow, um, and he he was still very much involved. Died at ninety five. So the point being is, uh, it's not it's not too late, hmm. you know. Then, right. there was, for him, he was okay financially. Um, he he had a good pension and things like that. Instead of like you said, just spending his twilight years twiddling his thumbs. He was very effective and actually had a second career in full-time Christian service. Wow. Now, let me ask Mark. Mark so, Good, you know, Skip calls in. What a great testament. Skip, stay with us. we got some other callers calling in, and we may have to wait to the break because we're coming out of a break. But why is what Skip just shared? That's In America, that's the exception, not the norm. That's but that, right. shouldn't that be the norm? Isn't that what biblical Christianity right. is? You would think so. You okay. would think that's what we need to do. Well, God bless you, Skip. Thanks for sharing. You bless us. We'll go to some more calls. we got Clay, uh, Vanessa, and some other folks that want to get in at 866 866- Three for Truth missions right here on this Truth Talk Live edition. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. Truth Talk Live. This is the Truth Network. Powerful words of Jesus before he left. To go and prepare a place for us, he said, go and preach the gospel. Go and make disciples. You shall receive power. Another version of the Great Commission, Acts 1-8, after the Holy Spirit's come upon you, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. And out of that commission, here we are. Here I am calling on Jesus because someone heard Jesus, followed Jesus, and went fishing. Mm-hmm. And that person went fishing, that person went fishing, and here generations down the road, I'm in a studio with Jumper, Chetwood, Mark, and Stu, and we're following him, and we're teaching others how to fish, or we're inviting you to follow Christ. Maybe you don't know how. Maybe this is the first you've heard about God. Maybe you got questions. Maybe you're mad at God. Call us at 866-34-TRUTH, 866-348-7884. Specifically today, we're talking about why don't more believers go on these missions trips and honestly, are they such a good idea? Mark Good with International Commission. I mean, there's so many lost souls here in America, right around the right across the street. And here you are raising all this money to go to these countries, unreached people groups. Why, why, why don't you concentrate here? What are you thinking? <laughs> Isn't that an improper use of resources? No, man. We're we're supposed to go into all the world, and we do go into the Jerusalem, the Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. So we're focusing on North America. That's one of the things that we've been doing. You just heard our Vice President for North America, Stephen Jumper, talk about that. We've got those local things. Those are great opportunities for churches and for church members to travel not a whole distance, but to go and to learn how to use the Operation Andrew method and share the gospel and go with the intent and express intent of sharing the gospel 
Uh, but yeah, you can do it locally. You can do it internationally. We we like to say we can we can take you um, close or far. Okay, the number is eight six six three four truth. Anyone have a missions trip story testimony? How a missions trip has changed your life? Anyone skeptical of these missions trips? Maybe you want to be a devil's advocate. Maybe you uh, would never allow your young person to go on a missions trip to a country where it would be a little bit dangerous. Maybe young person, you never let your mom and dad go. I mean, what what in the world? Chad, what are you thinking? I mean, you were flying the jets. You were a CPA of a major company. Get up on that mic and tell us what is it that got you going in all this thing. And now you're full-time going to these dangerous places, sharing the gospel, you with your sweet wife Jody and all that. Talk to us real quick. What is it? Well, there uh, came a time in my life then at, at the age of 37 when I prayed to receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord, and everything changed. I realized that I was called to do something that was uh, of the Lord. And so uh, I went on a mission trip with International Commission in 2002. We went to India. And uh, my wife and I went out into the villages and we uh, preached among the untouchables. Uh, we had a young lady, uh, she was in a beautiful blue dress. She was sitting halfway back in the church. And I was sharing the gospel. And as we got to the picture of, the, of Jesus hanging on the cross, she began to weep. And I thought, well, she will pray to receive Jesus at the end, but she didn't. But the next day, uh, we went out into the village, and uh, in the first home we went into, there was the lady in blue. There she was. And we went in, and uh, we shared the gospel with her, and uh, she prayed to receive Jesus. And my wife began to cry. And this was the first person I had ever led to the Lord. Uh, since then, uh, mm. hundreds of thousands but in this case, that was the day, and she brought in her whole family, and all but one prayed to receive Jesus that day. Uh, and from then on, on that mission trip, we had 7,710 pray to receive Jesus. Oh, and in two weeks, that number had grown to 17,000. This is the Holy Spirit moving. This is the darkness in, the light, in their eyes turning to the light. And from hearts on fire for Jesus, the joy of the Lord, and their faces become radiant, not depressed. It's an incredible sight to see. Wow. And these are countries a lot of folks have absolutely nothing. It's in dire straits, a lot of poverty. And yet when they find Jesus, they have everything and far more wealthier than any of us are here in Western America, where we have so much materially, but our souls are empty and we're battling all kinds of things. But if Christians would wake up, if every believer would share the gospel, Mark, mm hmm what would happen? Oh, it would, it would, it will, it changes the community. We see that right at home. The churches that are on fire in doing that in their, in their neighborhoods and in their communities, you see change yeah. and you see communities change. And the same thing happens overseas yeah. uh, when that happens there. Why aren't we sharing our faith more? Why aren't more of us excited about missions? Why aren't we celebrating it more? Why are our eyes glossing over when the missionary takes the stand and in the church and starts preaching. Well, we should, should we be more excited about that in the revival that breaks out when you go on a missions trip? 866-34-TRUTH, toll free 866-348-7884. If you want a, a comment or may, maybe share something with our guest or maybe share a testimony, how God touched your heart as our guest caller earlier did about a, a testimony related to a missions trip, 866-348-7884. Let's go to Clay, who is calling from the Triangle area of North Carolina, Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill. Clay, you're on Truth Talk Live. Jump on in here, sir. Brother Stu, it is a great pleasure to be able to talk to you again. And, you know, it's interesting that you have the gospel of Mark in the studio with you talking about these things. <laughs> How about that? Here, here's something. Here's Mark something. 16. Um, yeah, get, get that one. Um, but here's something to share. I, years ago, when I was doing an outreach, and it is a mission, just think, think about this. You talk about, um, you know, you're doing commission or commission, um, think about this. There are other words that go along with that. Um, you know, you got admission, you got commission, you got permission, you got uh, omission. Think about that. The shorter words for that are admit, permit, commit, and um, omit. But I heard a pastor, and it was just before I found Truth Radio, talking about what do you, what are you an admission of? Um, is, is the Lord going to admit you know, to you to be where you need to be. So what my story is, is that, um, you know, I've been able to do mission trips here in this area um, and other places. I mean, I have not gotten to go overseas like I did when I was in the military or, you know, to go to other places. But, 
years ago when I was doing this um, outreach thing in downtown Durham, I got to be part of this wonderful group, and I got to meet this wonderful man and his wife, Brother Don. Thank the Lord he's an evangelist, I think, somewhere down in Texas or Mississippi or something like that. And on the back of his truck was, what is the gospel? And underneath though each letter, G-O-S-P-E-L, says, God offers sinful people eternal life. And I have not forgotten that. And I have heard that with people. I'm like, D- are you saved? Do you know Jesus? Do you know the gospel? And I had a guy two years ago at the state fair make me up a shirt, and on it is the cross with blood and the crown and the uh, spray painted on the thing. I believe in the gospel. Wow. And I believe what that when we can be in a mission and admit that we need to be out doing his work and sharing the gospel, it makes all the difference to me. It's not, Brother Stu, I heard you, I'm, 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 I'm thinking I'm amazing you a little bit more. But see, that's not me. That's how God the Father works. That's how Jesus works. Because we need to be able to share things with people like that. I, I'm truly thankful. I, I feel I've been blessed, and I know that's going to happen a little bit more. And I give thanks to Truth Radio because this is so important that people need to be right there where God the Father needs them to be because he's going to call us. And I've, I have been able to do that, and I've Hallelujah. got some more coming. Well, Clay, God bless you, Clay. Thanks for calling it. What do you say to Clay, Mark, uh, with hey. International Commission? And, and everyone, at, like someone like Clay, may want to go with you on a trip. That's right. Yeah, we've got opportunities uh, coming up soon. In fact, uh, this year – we're going to different places. Uh, I'll just kind of rattle off a few of the places. Uh, Cameroon, Bulgaria, Cuba, Lebanon, M- Malaysia, Zimbabwe, Argentina, England, Solomon Islands, Brazil, uh, to the Middle East, South Asia, Rwanda, Serbia, Spain, Romania, Cambodia, Bolivia, Chile, another trip to the Middle East, and then all kinds of places here in North America also. Yeah, so. All kinds of opportunities, that's Chet, for sure. Chet, Chet would, uh, what's the percentage of believers in these countries? Is like 50, 70, 80% Christian in these countries, or what? Where I am in Asia, I have 19 countries, and I have six of them that have 2% or less Christian. I have 15 who have 10% or less Christian. What does that mean? 98 out of 100 have never heard the name of Jesus. 90 out of 100 have never heard the name of Jesus. Half of them are uh, in the top 50 uh, most persecuted countries in the in the world. When we started back in 2005, my wife and I, number one was North Korea. It has been number one since until last year. And Afghanistan took number one. Number three was Vietnam. Number four was Laos. Number 10 had been, uh, it was China, had been forever number one. Mm. And here we go to these countries, and what a privilege it is to go share the only message that will change an eternity the gospel. And the voice of the martyrs, they, they rate these countries, I guess, don't they? That's right. So it's pretty safe, these countries, right? What do you say? Well, as I told Stu, and uh, <laughs> I said, the places we go, uh, my, my chances at Christmas to be back at Christmas are 50-50. Wow. Why, why would he do this? What would compel him to go to places where it's dangerous? Would you send your youngster, would you go on a missions trip where you could get killed for the gospel? Or would you have to do an intervention and get someone to stop you from doing it? My niece and nephew just came back from one to the Middle East, and we'll talk about that and more on Truth Talk Live. More missions coming up in your calls after this. Truth Talk Live. This is the Truth Network. Okay, just these guys are blowing my mind and making me uncomfortable at the same time. I mean, how do we, Nick, how do we get guests like this? They, they come in here and they kind of make things awkward and uncomfortable because they're challenging me and all of our listeners to think more missiologically, to think more about people that need Jesus. I mean, what else is there that we should be more passionate about? Knowing Christ, of course, and making him known. If you don't know the Lord, We'd love to introduce you to him, and you're listening to a great place. Wherever you're listening to this program, keep listening. Listen to the Word. Go to a Bible-teaching church. Go to the person that's been sharing the Lord with you. Go talk to them and say, hey, I want to receive Christ. I want to follow Christ. I want you to disciple me. Go get baptized. Publicly express that to everybody, what he's done on the inside. Baptism simply tells everybody on the outside, coming out of that water, 
visibly demonstrating and showing people how the, the Christ was raised, raised you from the dead. You know, he buried with him in baptism and raised a new life. And then you're naturally to go make disciples. And one thing, Mark Good, that Chetwood here and Jumper have reemphasized to me over and over again every time we meet is that these, some of these believers, like in, in China and other Asian countries, when they come to Christ, it's instantaneous. Like they are instantly fishing for men. Like they, they, they don't, be, they, are, they are, what do we call, they are fertile believers. That's right. Yeah. It, and it is great because the excitement and the change in their life immediately is, is evident. You see it in their faces. Jeff said it a while ago. You see the glow. You see their, their physical countenance change and you also realize that here in america but definitely you see that in the best time to go share the gospel is right after you've received christ as your savior right there and right then and and you know what did jesus do he went where the the people were and that's what they need to do they need to go talk to their friends immediately and tell them what's yeah. different about their life that's so cool and and you know what's neat about what you're doing with international International Commission. You, you just had your 50-year anniversary. Read some of these yeah. accolades. I just kind of neat how God's worked, and some of these have even yeah. changed since you've done it. A, a, a ministry that is committed to sharing the gospel all over the world and, and coming alongside the church and really planting churches, because that's God's human organization, right? That's that the human way he organism that, that he, he works through, church planting. And the discipleship machine of the kingdom is the church, the local church. And you're seeing these things spread out of this. Tell us, yeah. hit, hit the numbers. Well, and the main thing for us, the main thing, we want to keep the main thing, and that's the evangelism and, and spreading the gospel and telling people about the Lord. Just as a, an example, our 50 years in review, we've had, um, when we printed our, our program for our 50th anniversary, it was 27,278, uh, you know, 27. I mean, 27 million, I'm sorry, 27 oh, wow. million, 278,438. That's what we printed. Mm. It's already grown because this was back in October. By the end of the year, the number has almost reached 30 million. Wow. People that have that received Christ have under received your received Christ. Yeah. But to do that, you have to tell people about it. And there's over 20 million that have heard the gospel just since 2018. We didn't keep that mm. kind of record. Record for the first few yeah. years, but for, since eighteen, we've we've spread the gospel to twenty thousand plus people, and uh, you know we love that. We love the fact that they get baptized. We love the fact that they're discipled. And the churches that we're working with in these foreign countries, they go about that. Now we have discipleship materials available, and they use those. But they also have their own discipleship, wow. and immediately that starts. But sometimes there was a story in Peru that uh, I went up in Huancayo, Peru, 11,000 feet up in the air, and talked to people, and we, we witnessed to a family. That family all accepted Christ, and they're up in the hills of, of Peru. They started a home church. And just an example, over this uh, 50 years, uh, well, really since 2018, there's been over 23,000 new churches that have started. So Praise again, Lord. it's yeah. discipleship, it's evangelism first, then discipleship, spreading the gospel. 9,000 or 9 million people been baptized. Uh, I mean, some of these statistics are just incredible. The one that I love and the one that we're we're loving is one person received Christ. That that really is yeah. great. That's a think party about, in heaven right there. Think about that party in heaven. Now yeah. think about the multitude of parties and the parties yeah. that are going on day after day. Mm -hmm. There's not a day that we don't have a project or a partnership yeah. going on uh, where Jesus is being shared <laughs> and the gospel's being shared 192 different countries all over the world. That's so cool. I'm Stu Everson. This is Truth Talk Live. It's Mark Good, who's the president of International Commission out of Dallas, Texas. They take people all over the world and all over the United States, and they actively share the gospel. They're inviting you to go on a missions trip with them. It will, it will jolt you. It will. I mean, when my niece and two nephews came back from the Middle East just a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, they were on fire. It changes your it, life. Yeah, they were sharing the gospel with folks. They were they were involved in all kinds of supernatural stuff, and they were seeing the Lord work. They were they were mm -hmm. encouraging the local church, and it's just something. Chet Wood, it happened to you in Mongolia. You got to tell everyone about this. What what a story. Oh yeah, we, uh, we told you earlier that we work with six hundred and seventy. Uh, people around the world, but we actually mobilize over 2 million uh, to go on these uh, trips uh, in the national, the national, and the internationals. And one of these individuals that's in Mongolia, 
uh, 22 years ago, he was in a maximum security prison, uh, and two individuals from a church went to that maximum a security prison and shared the gospel with him. And on that day, his eternity changed from the fires of hell to heaven. Amen. On that day, he became a child of God, born again to the spirit. On that day, uh, he said, I need to do something different. And the bottom line is when he finally got out, he started a church. And he said, I need to go back to the prisons and I need to share this gospel. And he went back and there were 272 in that prison and all 272 prayed to receive Jesus. He realized he had the spiritual gift of evangelism. And now he is sharing the gospel all over Mongolia. Mm -hmm. uh, he is going doing national to national projects in the most remote parts of, uh, of Mongolia in the midst of the, the, the religion of shamanism uh, and evil spirits. And he goes, and many times they are attacked, but they keep on sharing. Uh, it's an amazing thing. Uh, and stories like this, I probably have a thousand. Wow. And, you know, in, in that story, you know, let me tell you, let me, let's get the back office to that. Mm -hmm. Somebody, you just heard that, and, and I'm getting chills, and everyone in our studio audience is going nuts here. They're so excited about that. What a celebration. But that could have started with a little letter that someone got that mm -hmm. Jumper or Chetwood or you sent mm -hmm. saying, hey, will you send me a few bucks because i got to buy a plane ticket to go to Mongolia. Yeah, that's true. And that started when he said in Sunday school class, hey, will you pay, well, five or six of you raise your hand and pray for me next week. I'll be overseas. Just pray for me. It started when you, know, you got that annoying report from a guy in church to say, hey, I'm going on a mission trip. Who will help me? And so, Mark, good, we've got to all get involved in this thing, right? This yeah, is this is right. the, the mission of the church. Everyone listening, you're 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 in. That's right. You're in it to win it. You're that's, in it to win a, them. Yeah. To win as many as possible. And what's your challenge as we get out of here, Mark? Good, well, the, the international challenge. Commission? I think the challenge is to get people involved, just like you say. And of course, one of the things that I believe is the future is bright for our ministry. Uh, I see, and I I believe it's bright for everybody. Um, and as we partner with more countries each year, I said earlier, we're trying to get into all the countries of, of the world. And we only have, well, I'm going to just say less than, than 30. It's really 26 different countries that we need to get into. Um, we anticipate that God's going to be moving in mighty and miraculous ways. And so your listeners out there, your interest, your prayers, first of all, and your contributions to ministry work, they mean so much. Um, you don't realize what a dollar can do. Uh, we have stories of, of people being saved, and that dollar really, if you look at it, it equals one, one salvation. And in some countries, it, it, it equals even more than that. So the result of that partnership effort is that millions, they hear the gospel around the world, they hear the hope of Jesus Christ, and they come to faith in him at a time uh, here in America and around the world that needs hope more times than, yeah. than ever. Uh, so I'd ask that you pray for International Commission. I ask that you pray for yourself that God would get a hold of you and show you how you can share. And that's another part of our ministry is just equipping and enabling. People don't share because they're afraid or they don't know how. We've got tools that you can use, yeah. the equipping and enabling. You go to our website, mm -hmm. internationalcommission.org, and you can see, you find those E&E &E tools. Very simple. How you can share the gospel, how to have a gospel conversation, how to share Christ with someone right here or right across the world. I love it. Steve Jumper, what's your challenge out here, man? Guy in the business world, you left all that full time to go share the gospel all over the world in America. Yeah, so what I was going to say, uh, Mark's uh, hitting on it. Uh, we we really need to emphasize prayer. We didn't get into our Operation Andrew process much, but uh, it starts with prayer. And uh, like Mark said, um, pray for yourself, pray for your church, pray for people in your church. And we are uh, through our Operation Andrew process, we identify uh, the lost and non-believers, and we start praying for them. And 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 your listeners might react to say, "I don't know anybody that's lost. I don't know an unchurched person." We'll pray that the Lord would put somebody on your heart to that they would bring somebody in your life that you would be able to have a gospel conversation with. I would just challenge your listeners, Stu, that they are members of their church here locally in America and that they need to take a look at their own church, 
talk to their pastor, talk to their missions director, and say, hey, what are we doing to evangelize our own community, yeah. our neighbors uh, around our church first, and then in our, our local city, and then in our local state? And, and then how could we uh, use International Commission to uh, come and talk to us about uh, getting a church project together right here in America. I love it. Every believer is a witness. Witness right. is not a verb, it's a noun. That's who you are. Mm -hmm. And he just comes out and looking for those opportunities. And when you start sharing your faith, revival breaks out, doesn't it, Brother Mark? Amen. That's what we pray for. Yeah. So whether it's uh, across the street or around the world, be a part of it. What's the website for International Commission where listeners, churches, pastors, they want to find out more about what you're doing and get involved? It's internationalcommission.org. Internationalcommission.org. Okay. Yep. Wonderful. Thanks for having us, Stu. God bless Thank you, guys. You, what a word of encouragement. Hey, so, go share the gospel with one person tonight before your head hits a pillow. Amen. Truth Talk Live. Another program powered by the Truth Network.